Hey guys, and welcome now to part three. So in this video, I'm going to go through a few more things to consider as you light your models. So let me go ahead and get started first with light blocking. So as you know, most models are made of a styrene plastic, uh, which styrene can be thin enough to allow light transmission if you have lights butted up against it. So it's a shame when you put your model together, you turn on your lights only to see parts of the hull glowing. So you do want to light block it, and that can be accomplished by simply putting black paint uh, in the section that you plan to light. Uh, so you don't have to use your good paints for that. You can simply use craft paint because remember this is not going to be visible. Craft paint also tends to be a little thicker so um, you, know, you would you want to put just a nice heavy coat around the area so that you can, um, you can get a good amount of, of blockage there. Now another thing to think about is that you'll have some pieces on your model that have a pretty good amount of detailing and uh, so you can imagine the plastic is going to be different thicknesses from areas that are like this to areas that are flatter. Uh, so in those situations, uh, just doing light blocking with your craft paint is not going to be sufficient. You'll notice that in these thicker areas, the lights are not going to glow through, but in the thinner areas, the black paint's not going to be enough to keep it from glowing. So in those situations, you want to turn to this paint by Tulip. It's essentially a fabric paint. It comes out very, very thick, and um, it does a really, really good job at preventing those types of situations. So one thing that you can do as you are... Uh, light blocking is once things are dry, you know, you can take a uh, flashlight or even just your LED and shine it through the plastic and see if you do have any light leakage there. And if you do, again, this will do a pretty good job. So here's an example of a model that has a pretty good amount of detailing. Uh, this model is my only fiber optics project, uh, and these fiber optics are lit with 5 millimeter LEDs that are spaced uh, in the interior of the model. Unfortunately, I did not do enough light blocking, so uh, when you turn on the light, and if you're looking at this in a darkened room, unfortunately you'll see a little bit of a glow through the plastic here. And in a lighted environment like we have it right now, you don't really pick it up, uh, but certainly once it's in a dimmer environment, you can see that light glow. So again, you can avoid these situations by applying the proper amount of light blocking. I didn't know about tulip paint when I built this model, and uh, so had I used the uh, uh, fabric paint there, it would have prevented that situation. Now suppose you're going to be lighting the interior like we did with the Colonial One, and uh, one thing that you can do to help with light diffusion is to add over your uh, light block coating a uh, chrome silver. Um, you can also, you know, apply this as your light block coating as well, but, uh, you know, if you want extra coverage, put the black and then add the chrome. Again, what that'll do is, as you can imagine, it just allows the light to bounce around on the interior a bit more, so you have a, a higher chance of getting much better light diffusion. Um, obviously, you don't want to do that with every model that you have. You know, if you're not having to um, illuminate a wide area like that, you know, just leave it black. So here's an example of a model that I uh, applied the silver color or the chrome color on the interior. Again, we have windows that we really want to glow and um, so it was helpful to spray the interior with a silver color and that way we can get a bit more light diffusion there. So uh, the workflow is just a little bit different as you're building models and incorporating lighting, uh, meaning that you know you want to draw your holes or keep in mind where you're going to be uh, applying your lights so that way you can paint your model, detail it, and then install the lights permanently at the proper time. And I would try to make your project simple at the beginning, you know, just kind of get used to the uh, idea of, um, of working things out as you light your models, um, and the more comfortable you get, the more sophisticated you can become. Let's go ahead and show you a few basics here about soldering, which isn't too complicated. First thing you want to do is strip the wire of the coating. So we take our stripper here and just uh, remove the coating. Again, this accommodates different gauge wire, so let's go ahead and try in the thicker one. And you can see it comes off pretty easily. All right, after that, we want to then use our soldering iron. And it's helpful to get a little stand like this, and um, that way you can heat up for you without having to worry about falling over. Uh, it comes with a little sponge here. So we're going to go ahead and use some water to wet that. Next, it's helpful to have something like this on hand. Put that aside for a second. 
and uh, that way you can um, hold your wires together without having to balance everything. So we're just going to go ahead and solder these two here. So I just want to twist them together. And we're just going to go ahead and put it in this little clamp. Alright, so our soldering iron is ready to go. And uh, so you're just going to put a little bit of the uh, solder next to it, like right here. And you really don't need too much. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just enough to secure those wires. And again, it's nice to have the sponge here to clean off the tip. All right, so now we have to insulate that or protect it with some shrink tubing. And then we want to take our soldering iron and apply heat, because like the name implies, it's going to shrink the material. And now we have a secure connection. So you can see that soldering really isn't all that complicated, and uh, it shouldn't be something that intimidates you. Um, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a soldering iron there, you want just something very simple, and um, this way you can make sure that your connections are going to stay secure. All right, just want to go over some basic ideas here real quick about wiring up your LEDs. And there are two ways to do that. You can do it either in series or parallel. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but uh, basically LEDs that are wired in series are connected end to end. So you have the negative electrode of the first LED connecting to the positive electrode of the second, and then the negative electrode of the second connects to the positive electrode of the third, and so on and so on. All right, so you can see they're lighting up here. So again, in short, it just basically means that wiring in series is going to divide the total power of our power supply between the LEDs. All right, so here we now have the LEDs wired up in parallel. And basically what this means is we're taking all the positive electrodes, hooking them together, and hooking that into the positive of the battery. And same thing with the negative. We're hooking all the negatives together into the negative of the battery. All right, so the biggest difference then is that rather than dividing the power, as we saw with the series, uh, each of these LEDs now is receiving the same amount of voltage from the power source. And I'm sure you can tell in the video that it's much brighter this way. But the one disadvantage you have with parallel is that it will drain your battery faster uh, because each of the LEDs are drawing the same amount of power versus that of the series. So as I mentioned, I wire everything in parallel. And um, also, as I had said, that uh, I had gotten majority of my things from Model Train software and the instructions they provide are all set up to wire everything up in parallel. And uh, you know the one benefit you get from this is again you get lights that are equally bright and um, the other thing too is if one LED goes out in a series then they're all not going to work. So I've just found it's been easier for me to wire everything up in parallel and honestly I just don't really think about it a whole lot. Maybe I should a little bit more, but um, really it's just been a pretty simple process of wiring things up this way. All right, as I wrap everything up here, I want to just give you a quick word about switches. In our example here, we are using a slide switch. And so these switches typically come with three pins, one for power, one for the accessory, and one as the ground. Uh, the ground left open here. We've got a uh, switch now that's wired in with our negatives coming through the power pin and then the accessory through to our light. And we have the positive coming from the battery through a resistor and into our light. All right, so you can see it's functioning. I'm going to go ahead and switch it off here now. And just bear with me, I don't have this soldered in, so it's a little bit loose. Uh, so we've just turned it off. Let's go ahead and turn the circuit back on. And you can see it's as simple as that. So switches, as I told you in a previous video, come in a variety of forms. You have a slide switch like this. Uh, you can buy pre-wired ones like this one from modeltrainsoftware.com. And this is a push switch, which is already wired in. So all you have to do is twist these ends onto your light, and you are good to go. They also have ones that are not wired to any power source. You basically just uh, have the wires, and you can connect it as you need to to the appropriate power source. Now, the other thing to consider as you're working with switches, you're eventually going to have to mount them, and you want to do so and make it look finished and not sloppy. Uh, I did find this challenging at the beginning, and so I found a way of doing it to make it uh, come out much better. And uh, so let me just share that with you real quick. So with round switches like this, not a big deal because you just basically drill a round hole and they have nuts here to help um, 
mount the switch onto your surface there. Uh, but with rectangular switches, it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, so what I do is I take the switch and I will outline in pencil the area that I'll need to cut out. I'll take my Dremel and I will drill in small little holes along the perimeter and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. And then what I found particularly helpful is to have some good files. Uh, so you can get a nice file set, particularly with ones that have squared off edges because you will need them, as you can imagine, in corners. And it's nice also to have flat files here so that you can smooth it out in between. So slide switches I typically use when I'm mounting them into the base. Uh, I have mounted a couple of them into the models, but um, with models I have found if you're going to put the switch onto a model, um, I have found these useful in particular. Uh, these are again are those push switches and all you have to do is drill a hole big enough to account for the switch or the outer ring here of the switch. But just make sure that as you glue this into place, uh, it's going to be secure enough because you are applying pressure against the switch to activate it. So use some adhesive and what I have found is using plastic putty, uh, that's that moldable putty like this stuff here, um, so that you can secure your switch into place. You're not going to uh, have a situation where the switch pops back into the model. A good example of using these is with the X-Wing conversion that I did just recently, so you can access that. I also applied these uh, with the recent 22-inch uh, Eagle that I built. Uh, Alright, so that pretty much ends it here with lighting. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I wanted to make things as simple as possible, not get into anything too detailed for you there. So um, this is essentially what I do to wire up my models. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at InnerStellarModeler at gmail.com. And, of course, I'm always open to seeing some pictures of your lighted models. Would love to see them. So, uh, until the next video, take care, and thanks again for watching.